Hey guys, it's Kaylee. I'm back with another What Sold From Last Week video in the car again. It's been a long week, very, very busy. I have a lot of sales to share with you guys. Last week was actually a little bit slower than um, the previous weeks, which is to kind of be expected. Lots of ups and downs, but hopefully as I move towards Q4, um, those sales will continue to go up and up. Let me know how you guys' sales are going down below in the comments. I'm interested to hear. But for now, let's dive into these sales. All right, you guys, so I'm going to be fast, not do a lot of the preliminaries and just dive right into it. Because as you can see, it got a lot of sales up here that I want to show you some really great uh, Bolo brands, especially moving into fall and winter. I've had a lot of sweaters and stuff like that sell. So I wanted to share with you guys those sales um, so that you might have a couple of Bolos uh, to look for while you are sourcing fall and winter. So let's dive in. These sales are from September 3rd through the 9th. Um, that is a Sunday through a Saturday, and that is how I calculate my weeks. So we had a bunch of sales on eBay this week, 147 to com compare to only 67 sales on Poshmark. So this is why I love cross posting. I know there are some controversies over whether it makes your business better or worse. For me, I love cross posting. I think that it increases my sales and when one platform uh, isn't doing so well one week, uh, the other one picks it up like this. And sometimes I'll even have better sales on Poshmark than on eBay and it just all balances out. So that is why I love cross posting and List Perfectly is a great tool uh, to help you do that if you're interested in starting cross posting. So in total, I sold 214 items. Uh, my gross, just the item sales, was almost $6,000, so a little bit lower than what it has been, um, but hoping that's gonna, you know, continue to bump up as we uh, run into Q4. We're so close to it, and I'm really excited. Uh, my average sale price in total was around $28. It's kind of hovering around the $28 sale price range. Um, hoping to get that between $30 and $40 in Q4. I'd like to do that by the end of the year. That is my goal, hopefully actually 35 to 40. So let's dive into some of these sales. As I've mentioned before, uh, a lot of these items come from uh, things that I've thrifted in thrift stores near me, or they come from a wholesaler, people who source for me, um, and then I buy items from them, or sometimes I even pop, uh, buy reseller death piles and buyout closets and things like that. So these are all a combination of those. My average sale price tends to be between five and six dollars. Um, just as a whole, if I paid up for anything um, majorly, I'll be sure and let you guys know, but in general, it's about five to six dollars. All right, let's dive in here. This is a Zara women's linen button down shirt. This is a category in Zara that performs extremely well. Linen items in Zara always perform well for me and they tend to have a pretty high sell through rate. Uh, this one's actually a size extra small, so didn't have much going for it, but still sold uh, for my full asking price of around $35. Um, and like I said, this is just a great category in Zara, particularly the linen button ups have a really great sell through rate in just about any size, men's and women's. Um, and I also noticed that the men's category has some linen hoodies. Um, and those also have a fantastic sell-through rate. So like I always say, never completely discount a brand. There are certain niches within a brand that can perform well. Next up is kind of a fall and winter item. These were not in the best condition, uh, but they were one of the most popular UGG styles out right now, which are the UGG mini boots. These are super popular last year when they came out with them. And so I figured they're going to be popular this year again. Um, I pretty much skip most Ugg boot things unless they're some of the newer styles. Um, and this is one of the newer styles, the mini boots. So if you guys come across mini boots, uh, definitely worth looking up. This one had quite a bit of wear, uh, but I picked it up to just anticipate the upcoming season and be one of the first sellers uh, to have this up because not a lot of people do have winter boots up right now. Um, and I'm glad I did because it sold pretty quickly. Uh, I listed it for $35. It sold on an offer to watcher for around $30. Next up is a bag sale. This is uh, something I've never sold before. It is a Duluth Trading Company bag. And this is like a men's or women's canvas, really heavy duty 
bag, very large, it took quite a bit to ship this. Um, there was a little bit of uh, wear to it. it. There was some wear in the leather and it was missing its like long crossbody strap. Still priced it pretty high just because comps were really good. And we listed it for around $100 and it sold pretty quickly for an offer to watcher of around $85. And offer to watcher, we usually send out either 10 or 15% to our, our, to our watchers. Next up is an anthropology piece. This is pretty unique. I've never seen anything like this. Um, it had uh, some hurdles to climb because it was an extra small petite. But since it was so unique and I'd never seen anything like it, I wanted to get it. It is a denim like duster jacket. And I looked at the style. It was called the Peggy denim duster jacket. And this had some really good comps for it. I did pay up for this one. I paid $15. We listed it for $85. It did sell for a full asking price. So if you see anything very substantial by Anthropology, regardless of it being a small size, I say it's definitely worth uh, looking into the style because most of the time, if it's really wacky, it's probably more rare and people are looking for it. All right. Next up is a brand I don't pick up a lot of anymore. It is North Face. I try to stick to the newer styles and I definitely always like try to look up the style itself um, and do a comp with the style. This one's pretty easy to look up because it was new with tags. It was a tri-climate dry vent jacket. This was new with defects, which you can see we listed here because it was missing its internal lining. Um, and pretty good comps nonetheless. We listed this for around $100. It sold on an offer to watcher for $85, even without the lining. So North Face Nua tags, I would definitely say I would probably pick it up. Um, it holds a lot of value when it's new with tags. Next up is one of my favorite brands to sell, and this brand is really good in fall and winter because if you can find some really nicer materials, wool, cashmere, uh, mohair, things like that, um, it really, really increases the value of Eileen Fisher. And this is a brand that can perform pretty pretty well during fall and winter. Um, this one was a size extra large. It was a wool blend coat, really nice coat. It had a belt and snap closure. Um, it was missing its belt loops, so there was a small flaw with it. The little pieces of thread that hold that were missing, um, but other than that, really fantastic condition. Uh, I paid around $9 for this, and we listed it for 90 and it sold relatively quickly because I actually listed this in the middle of summer, um, and so the cold weather's just now starting. I got ahead of the season and it was one of the first ones to sell. So plan everything went according to plan and I'm happy with that. Um, and it did sell for my full asking price of around $90. So basically 10 times my money. You can't beat that. But yeah, a brand that I'm going to be looking for a lot during fall and winter in the sweater stuff. All right, next up is a brand that I get in pretty much anything it is AYR. I just learned about this brand. Uh, Might have been this year maybe the end of last year, um, but very solid brand, very good following, sells for a ton of money. I've even sold stuff with flaws for like $30, $40, so uh, definitely a brand to be on the lookout for. So this is just a uh, striped button-up shirt. I did do a Google lens to figure out what the style was called. I've noticed that AYR buyers do like looking up the style and it helps them sell faster. This one was called the Deep End Oxford Top and it was just a size medium. It sold for my full asking price of around $75. $75 for this t-shirt. I mean, that's crazy. So I definitely be on be on the lookout for this one and I wanted to show you guys this brand because it's pretty um pretty unassuming. Like they're very plain, like capsule wardrobe kind of minimalist stuff, somewhat preppy. Um and it, it, you know, you would pass on it if you didn't know to look for something so simple. So I wanted to show you guys that label. 
Next up is a brand that is newer to me. This is Kenzo Paris. Um, I have not sold this brand before that I can remember, and I just started getting it in wholesale, so I was really excited to le learn a little bit more about this brand. Um, I also would have thought that this was a women's shirt, but did a style search, and it's actually a men's, so if you uh, come across this brand, I would definitely you know make sure to find your style so that you're getting the right gender of the item. This is called the Rice Bag Graphic T-Shirt. Um, really great comps on this. We listed it for $75. It went on an offer to Watcher for $64. Uh, this one sold really, really quickly, and it went on an international sale through eBay's international shipping program. So uh, they make graphic t-shirts, from what I can tell, is what they're best known for. They have sweatshirts, I think. I'm not sure what else they sell, um, but for sure the graphic t-shirts are what I've seen the most of. All right, next up is a fall winter sweater sale. This is a Ralph Lauren item. This one is similar to um, uh, Eileen Fisher that I was just talking about, where if you can pair some really great materials with it, it's going to perform really, really well for you in fall and winter because this brand holds a lot of value. So this one, as you can see, is a Merino mohair blend. It also says hand knit, which... I find sometimes can help with sweaters, uh, cable knit. It had the like cow turtle neck, uh, neck. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it, um, but it had some, you know, extra details giving it a little bit of pizzazz. Um, we listed this for $45. It sold on an offer to watcher for around $38. And this one also went on the international shipping program. Next up is a newer brand to me. It is Nap Loungewear, and all the tag says is Nap. Um, so I learned about this brand uh, from wholesale. You know, somebody sending sending it to me. I don't find a lot of this in my area, but you might have this uh, in your area, depending on what state you live in, because it is definitely more uh, rare to find in the Midwest, I believe. At least I've never found it, and I do a lot of thrifting. Um, that if you're somewhere in the south or out west, you might find a lot of this brand. Um, so you might only find it in the sleepwear section, which is why I tell you guys to always check the sleepwear section. There are some really great pieces. So this would be one of those. This is a kimono robe. It was made out of cupro, which I'm starting to learn is a pretty good fabric. Uh, I did pay up for this in wholesale. I paid $15 for this. We listed it for $50 and it did sell for our full asking price. This one sold, I think, within days of getting listed. So maybe I could have priced it a little bit higher, um, but based on comps, that's where I felt pretty comfortable. But yeah, definitely keep your eye out for Nap Cashmere. Next up is one of my favorite menswear brands to sell. I'll pretty much pick up anything in this brand. It is Flint and Tender. This is a brand sold on the Huckberry site and it is very popular, has a really good following. I listed it for around $50 or best offer. We weren't really sure what to list this for because I couldn't find much information about the canvas pants uh, and it sold on an offer for $40. So really great profits there. Um, it did take a couple of months to sell, which is why we added the best offer. Maybe I had it priced a little too high, but I couldn't really tell based on comps. So my rule of thumb is always to list high, put best offer on and let the market decide. Here's a jersey. I haven't showed one of these in a while. Um, I do still pick up jerseys. They're kind of like blazers to me where I've talked about, I didn't really know how to list them or much about them. So I kind of avoided them for a while, but I feel pretty good about them now. I just look up the, uh, first of all, I feel them and see if they feel like they're higher quality or if they feel like junk. And then I usually look them up with the brand and then you know, I don't know most of the uh, sports teams, so I just look up whatever's written on the jersey. So for this one, I think this was, okay, it did not have a uh, brand label, but I would have looked up NFL, oh, it is Reebok actually, we missed that, it says Reebok down here on this patch. Uh, I would have looked up NFL equipment, Patriots, jersey and I probably put 85 in the search as well or Ocho Chino just to figure out what I was looking at there. I do know the Patriots though. So um, 
it's pretty easy because all the information's there. If you're someone that's shying away from jerseys, like blazers, all the information's there. You just got to know how to search it. So this is um, a pretty good brand to be on the lookout for as far as sports teams go. Patriots is really popular. Cowboys is another one that I know is pretty good. And even though I don't know, you know, what I'm doing with these, they still sell pretty well. So we listed this for around $45 and it did sell for our full asking prices to take a couple of months to sell. Um, but that's a little bit of insight into what I do to sell jerseys. Next up is a brand that has significantly dropped for me. This is Peter Millar. I used to pick up everything in this brand. I'm more selective now. What I do know about this brand is that they're polos that have prints on them, meaning they're not a solid color. They have something else. This one was their like crown print logo. Uh, Arabolo. The solid ones don't do as well for me anymore, but anything that is pr a printed polo, I almost always get because it sig significantly increases the value and you can actually do a comp on that and see the difference. Uh, I listed this for $50. It did take, I think, a couple of weeks to sell, but it sold for my full asking price. So Peter Millar printed polos. Next up is a login looky brand. I, anything I see that looks super login look like this, I just always look up. Anything oversized, very flowy, because um, there are a lot of really niche brands that do well. This one is Cynthia Ashby, which is a brand I just learned about. This is wide leg, a pair of wide leg linen pants. They were a size extra small, but like I said, they were just very, very login looky um, and took a chance on this one. There was some slight discoloration on the leg like you can see, uh, see here, but it did sell uh, for a very good price. I listed it for $50, probably would have been higher if it didn't have those discolorations. And it ended up selling uh, within actually a couple of weeks for an offer to watcher of $42. So $42 for something with a discoloration is really fantastic. I would definitely keep your eye out for Cynthia Ashby. Next up is another brand that I hardly ever get, but I will be looking for in fall and winter if it's paired with a nicer material. It is Vince. Um, like I said, this brand does not perform well for me in general, but in fall and winter, I can pair it with a really good material and it sells for quite a bit. So this is a wool cashmere sweater. Um, with all of these sweaters, you really want to be careful about shrinkage. So if you come across any brand that has wool, cashmere, anything like that, make sure that it doesn't feel kind of stiff, like the sweater was shrunken. That's something you're going to want to keep your eye out for as you're sourcing. Um, we listed this for $45. It took a couple of months to sell. Uh, but it did sell for our full asking price. And I'm glad, again, that I was listing stuff towards the middle to end of summer to anticipate an upcoming season because all this stuff is starting to sell really quickly now. And I was just able to kind of get ahead of it. Next up is a Polo Ralph Lauren item. I do love selling this brand. I think it really depends on um, what it is. Um, but their Western-y stuff, anything that's super Western, especially in the men's category, performs really well. It's kind of what the brand is known for. They're like Southwestern, Western stuff. So this is a men's pearl snap shirt. Had a little bit of like paisley patches here. That is a definite yes. Even just like the denim chambray look shirts in men's perform really well. So all around good factors. We listed this for $50. I'm pretty sure this sold the exact same day for an offer to watcher of $42. Maybe I priced that a little too low if it sold the same day, but still happy with the sale. All right, the next two sales are both the same brand. They are Norma Kamali. And from what I can tell, um, this brand is well known for their like completely black dresses. Um, they sell other stuff too, but their dresses, they're very uh, minimalist, very just kind of plain looking, you know, if you don't know about this brand, you don't know to look for it. This brand tends to be made out of pretty comfy material too. Um, from what I can tell, it's very like soft, stretchy. Let's see what this one was made of. Polyester spandex. So yeah, lots of stretch. Um, 
but I wanted to share the, share this brand with you because if you see, if you see like a completely black, very plain dress, I would check to see if it is Norma Kamali. Um, and it's been performing really well for me. The comps look pretty decent on these. This one is a women's jumpsuit actually, size extra large. Um, I have this listed for 50 bucks, which if I would have waited, I, I definitely could have gotten my full asking price. Uh, but I did run a dress sale markdown in my eBay store just to start fleshing out some of the summer items. So this did get caught in that sale. I've had a lot of uh, sales come from doing that markdown. Um, I marked down, I think it was dresses, shorts, and possibly possibly women's sandals. Um, and yeah, it's been going really great. And I'm just happy to flush out some things, even if it's for a lower price, uh, just to make room for the winter stuff. So this one was caught up in that sale. It sold for $35. Although, like I said, I think I could have gotten more if I wouldn't have marked it down. Uh, but really great brand to look out for. Uh, this next one is pretty much the same thing. It is an extra large dress This sold to a different buyer and it went for the same price. I listed it for 50 and it was in that sale. It sold for 35. Really, really fantastic brand. Um, they make pants and stuff too. I think actually I lied. They're most known for their elephant pants. So if you look up Norma Kamali elephant pants, you'll see what I'm talking about. Have not found those yet though. All right, next up is Soft Surroundings. I wanted to bring this brand up because it is a pretty good bread and butter brand for me. I try to stick to the larger sizes, but even some of their smaller sizes, if it's like heavily embroidered or it's a longer dress, uh, perform really well for me. And I'm very sad because my sister just informed me and I just looked it up before this video that they have filed bankruptcy and they are closing all of their stores. And from what I could read, I think it said they were selling everything to Coldwater Creek, which is another brand. So I think they're absorbing that brand and liquidating, but I don't know how that's going to affect this brand's sales. It could significantly increase them because they're not going to be making them anymore, or it could significantly decrease them because it's now going to be known as a brand that went out of business. So I'm hoping for the first one that it's going to go up in value, uh, but I just don't know. So I thought I would share that with you guys. I was super sad about that. Um, but here is a soft surrounding sale. This is a women's size large, really nice uh, beaded tunic. I'm really surprised about this because from what I can tell, this has a really good following. People really like soft surroundings. Uh, we listed this for 40 bucks. It sold on an offer to watcher for $34. And then I also had another soft surrounding sale. This one is a really nice uh, cardigan. This was a size extra large. It has some embroidery on the sleeves. Very unique. So I wanted to get it. Uh, we listed this for $40 as well, and it sold on an offer to watcher for $34 also. So uh, I'm still going to be on the lookout for this brand. Let me know what you guys think below. Is it going to make it better? Is it going to make it worse? And then I'm also going to be like looking out for probably liquidation sales. I don't know if I have a soft surrounding store near me, but I'm going to keep my eye out and see. Next up are a couple sales from a brand that I I really love as well. Really great bread and butter brand. Um, I try to stick to larger sizes in this brand as well. Kind of the same thing as soft surroundings. Larger sizes, unless it's like super unique, heavily embroidered, something like that. Uh, size large and up for me is where it's at. If you get an extra large, it like sells the same day, in my opinion. This is a Sundance Woman's Camellia embroidered top. Uh, so you know, size large and it was embroidered. There was a small pinhole in the item. We listed it for 40. It sold, uh, actually, I think it might've sold the same day for an offer to watcher of $34. So really great sale there. And I wouldn't pick up everything in this brand. You definitely want to factor stack, but it's a good bread and butter brand for me. And here is another one by this brand. This one was just a size medium, but it was a heavily embroidered pair of like wider leg pants, which is the reason that we decided to pick them up. One of the buttons on this was halfway broken, which I believe we put in the description down below. That's not loading, um, but we should have definitely put it here as well. Um, and we listed these for 
originally, I think, around 50 and have since dropped the price. So we probably listed them too high in the beginning, but they ended up selling on a drop down price of $40, which is pretty good. All right, next up are the Poshmark sales. This one I wanted to show you because it's not a brand I would like heavily look for, Bobby Brooks, but the category is pretty good, which is very mature, very modest looking midi to maxi link dresses. Any kind of mature, modest looking dress, I always look up. It usually I can get like 30 to 50 bucks for it guaranteed. Um, so I usually pick them up regardless of the brand, although sometimes brands can add value. So I always look them up. Uh, this one, I think we originally listed for $35. I probably sent out a Posher VA offer. Um, Posher VA is an extension that sends it basically like as a Poshmark virtual assistant. You just set up the settings. It's an extension. It runs in the background and you can tell it to send out offers to watchers without within so many minutes of somebody liking the item, which is probably where most of these sales came from. So this one, I think I originally had listed around 35 and it sold for $29, most likely from a Posher VA offer. This one is another North Face piece. This is the women's Dion jacket. I only got this because it seemed a little bit more substantial than other pieces. It was longer length. It was also a size extra large. Found out that the style was pretty decent and we ended up selling it for $50. So jackets are starting to sell guys. Make sure you get them up. Next up is a Madewell item. I haven't been having much luck in Madewell. Uh, kind of the same thing as Soft Surroundings and Sundance. I try to stick to certain styles and larger sizes. Um, in Madewell, the wide leg pants have been performing really well for me. So these are a pair of Huston pull-on crop pants, size large. So lots of factor stacking there. Uh, we originally listed this, I think, for $40 on... Poshmark, Posh Bay sent out an offer for $35 and the offer was accepted. Here's another Madewell sell. These are the curvy vintage straight jeans in a larger size 30. They also had some distressing, which in my opinion adds a little bit of value. Not having good luck with Madewell jeans lately, but there are certain styles and sizes if all the stars align. <laughs> it is a pretty good sale and I've noticed it sells better on Poshmark. Uh, we originally listed this for around $40 and an offer of $34 was accepted. All right, I actually had a couple of Prana sales this week in the women's department. Uh, Prana hiking pants, both men's and women's, are still performing really well for me. These are called the Brianna Skinny Pants by Prana. And we listed these for around $40. They sold on an offer to watcher or offered a liker through Posture VA for $34. Taylor Stitch is one of my favorite men's wear brands to sell. It is newer to me. If I see anything in this brand, I pretty much pick it up. Very high sell-through rate, sells for really good prices. Uh, these ones were called the Democratic Chino Pants in a size 35. This one's very similar to um, Flint and Tender, it might actually, Taylor Stitch might actually be sold on Huckberry. I don't know. It's very, it's like I could see it being one of those brands, um, but very, very good sell through on this. I would definitely keep your eye out for it. I only paid four bucks for these and we listed them for around $60. They sold for 50 on Posh. Next up is another brand in fall and winter I pair with nicer materials and it performs really well. This is J. Crew. This is a merino wool alpaca blend sweater. And this one sold for $34 on Poshmark. Uh, depending on the piece, there are like some factor stacking you can do in J. Crew for fall and winter. So this is definitely a brand I would keep your eye out for in nicer materials. Next up is a newer shoe brand to me. It is Vavaya, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, they're kind of a Rothy's dupe. And I talked about uh, this brand in a recent members only video. So um, if you're interested in that, you can join my channel membership. I think it's $4.99 a month. Um, and now I am doing once a month, a five members only 
Bolo deep dive where we talk about brands that um, I just learned about and we do a little bit of a deep dive into them and what the brand's all about so that you'll know what to be on the lookout for. Um, but this was shown in one of those videos and yeah, they're selling super quickly for me. This is the Margot Ballet Flap. I only paid four bucks for this, listed it for around 70 on Poshmark and accepted an offer of $59. Next up is a plus size brand that I get if I can factor stack everything. It has to be a lot of factor stacking involved. So this is Torrid. Size 3, which is one of their larger size, translates to a 3X. The factor stacking with this one is that it was a larger size and it was a long length cardigan. So um, those are two factors. I kind of wish I would have had more, but nonetheless, it sold for $28. So this brand can be pretty good in terms of uh, a bread and butter brand if you have enough factors. Next up is a newer label, We The Free Top. This is a size extra large. I found with uh, anthropology pieces and uh, free people stuff, size extra large seems to be like a holy grail of a size and almost everything I get that's this size sells really well. So um, pick this one up. It is just a striped tunic top, but like I said, I think it was a newer style based on the label. It sold for $34. Free people is something that I am very cautious of, but size extra large, I definitely get. Here's another women's Prana pants sale. These were called the Aria hiking pants and these ones sold for 30 bucks. So lots of like longer full length hiking pants starting to sell. This is a, another bread and butter brand that I like to get in plus size pieces if I can factor stack. Uh, this one is Maggie Barnes for Catherine's. The reason I got this one is because it is a 4X. It is a longer length cardigan and it was also floral print. So a few things to factor stacking there. If you can't factor stack, like if there's only, you know, it's a 4X, but it's super plain and it's just like a t-shirt, probably not gonna sell. So you have to be very careful you have to squeeze a lot of factors out to get to $25. So be very cautious of that. But if there are a lot of factors, I can usually get about 25 bucks for it. Here's a new, newer brand to me. It is Topo Designs. Uh, this is something, I believe I got this in wholesale is the only reason I learned about this brand, but you might have this in your area. Seems to be a pretty good brand with a really decent following. Um, very like minimalist kind of outdoorsy looking stuff from what I can tell. Uh, we listed these for around $55 and I accepted an offer of 43 on it and I'm pretty sure this sold relatively quickly. Next up is another J. Crew item. Terrible photo here, but you get the point. Um, and this is just a category that I'm going to look for in fall and winter, novelty sweaters and sweatshirts. So by novelty, I mean it's got some kind of like a graphic print. Um, lots of the times they are animals. Sometimes they'll be like gnomes or, you know, something holiday related. Um, but I have noticed that novelty sweaters and sweatshirts during fall and winter in mall brands like J. Crew, Banana Republic. Um, I'm trying to think of some other brands here. Um, but those two definitely in novelty prints perform really well. Uh, so yeah, be on the lookout for that. It's more bread and butter, but it sells pretty consistently. This is a horsing around is what the actual style name was sweatshirt just got a couple horse graphics on the front and it sold for $29 and that's pretty good for a J Crew size medium so keep your eye out for that I showed these shoes in a thrift haul I paid up for these I actually paid let me see here 20 bucks for these fly London shoes which is a pretty decent brand to look for but they were new and they came with the box. So because of that, I thought that they were definitely worth picking up um, because even pre-owned, I probably could have gotten like 40, 50 bucks for these. Um, so I paid 20 bucks. I actually was hoping to get my full asking price of $75 and I did. So everything went according to plan 20 into 75. I'm not doing any calculations here. I can do a calculation right now. Let's see. 
I'm not even sure if you guys can see the calculator here on the screen. So let me see here. We've got 75 times 80% because it's a 20% uh, fee. Leads us to 60 minus 20. So I paid 20, but I made a profit of $40 on that. So I think it was well worth the risk. And I actually prefer paying up for items that are going to sell super quickly um, and have like no fuss, like, you know, not a lot of people going to give me issues. I just noticed we actually put great pre-owned condition here and they still sold at that price. So luckily the buyer realized that they were new. <laughs> I'm losing it guys. I need to do a little bit better of checking our listings because we got a lot of new people, but I'm still happy with that sale. Um, they were, in fact, new. Next up is a brand that uh, was my first time finding this brand, and I got it in. I think this might have come. I think this might have come from a buyout or some sort of wholesale. I can't remember. I definitely did not thrift this though. It's Ula Johnson which is definitely a Bolo brand. It is a designer brand and has a really great following. This is a size 14 mini dress. Gorgeous. Uh, I originally listed this for around $175. I quickly got an offer for $135, which I went ahead and accepted. That was fantastic profits. Could I have waited a lot longer and maybe squeeze 50 more bucks out of this? Probably so, but I am all about the quick sale and really good return on investment. Definitely a brand I would pick up in just about anything. Next up is a brand I've been selling quite a bit of. It is Johnny Was. Um, I actually, since I have been getting it in wholesale, now I'm like finding it in my area, which makes absolutely no sense. I guess it's just because it's on the brain and like, I've touched it. I've seen the tag. Like I know exactly what to look for. So like I'm able to spot it out of the corner of my eye now, if that makes sense. And now I'm finding Johnny was pieces and I never used to be able to do that in my area. I don't know. It's weird. Um, but I wanted to share this one with you. I actually did get this in wholesale. I paid a total of $30 for the set. Um, but I want to show you this because this is actually sleepwear set pajamas. And so again, if you're not going through the sleepwear section, there can be some really great pieces that you might be missing out on. This would be one of those things. I listed this originally for, I want to say $90. Um, and again, I paid 30 for the set. Someone quickly sent me an offer for 75 and I just went ahead and accepted that offer because it was a really decent offer and I'm making quite a bit of money on it. Next up is a designer brand that I do like getting in is Diane von Furstenberg. This one sometimes takes a while to sell, but I do like getting it because I can usually, if I sit on it, get a really decent profit off of it. Um, I paid five bucks for this dress. It is called the Lily Ann 100% Silk Wrap Dress. So it did have some like factor stacking with the fact that it was silk and a wrap dress, which really adds value. Felt pretty confident in that decision. I listed for around 75 and I accepted an offer of $62 on this dress. This one actually sold really quickly. Next up is a Bolo brand, Poupette St. Barth. This is also a brand I just learned about from getting it from other people. Um, so I did get this one in wholesale. Um, I originally listed this for $105 on Poshmark. It is a little mini dress. And I got an offer for $89, which I absolutely accepted. I thought that was really close to the asking price. And yeah, really great profits. If you have like longer link stuff and Poupette St. Barth, I've noticed it can go for like hundreds. So definitely keep your eye out for this brand. Next up is a newer brand to me. It is Dudley Stevens, which I've learned has a following in certain things. This is a pullover sweatshirt. Uh, so I did, um, I, I would say I only got this because it was a little bit more substantial. I would definitely do your comps on if it was something lesser, like just a t-shirt. But this brand in general seemed to hold quite a bit of of value. Um, I got this in wholesale as well. I listed it for around, I want to say $55 and accepted an offer of $49 on this. Next up is a Lululemon uh, sale. It is a men's blazer. And I want to show you this because I didn't even realize they made men's blazers. Um, and they have a really big following. So this one had a uh, 
this is a terrible photo. It's really hard to capture sometimes black and dark navy blue items. Uh, here's a better one. This one was really hard to capture for some reason. So the picture looks terrible, but it's still sold because it's a really great item. Um, Lululemon, uh, men size medium blazer and yeah, really, really great item. Um, I would definitely keep your eye out for Lululemon men's blazers. And I just wanted to show this in the video because like I said, I had no idea that they made blazers and might be something you want to look for. If you see something that looks athletic-y and it's a blazer, it might be Lululemon. Definitely check into it. Um, I originally listed this for around $100, got an offer for $85. This one sold really quickly and I accepted that offer. Next up is a, another J. Crew piece. Did some factor stocking with this one. This is the J. Crew 365 line. This was a size 3X and it was like a blazer sweater jacket, which if you followed the J. Crew deep dive I did, um, we know that blazers are performing really well in this brand in certain pieces. I would definitely say sweater blazers are going to perform really well in fall and winter. So I definitely wanted to get this one. Uh, we listed this for around $60. It sold on an offer for $51 on Posh. Here's another Lululemon piece. Um, this one is an outerwear brand. And just wanted to show you this simply because um, I did not realize that they made such such substantial pieces in Lululemon. This is called the Rain Rebel Jacket. So as you're looking for jackets uh, for fall and winter, if you don't see a brand label on the inside and it feels kind of athletic-y and well-made, I would check the back left or maybe the back top middle near the collar to look for that label because um, you might be missing them if you didn't know that they made stuff like this. So I paid uh, I think I want to say five or seven bucks for this. I remember getting this because sorry I paid nine dollars for this. I just checked my records here. I remember getting this because Joe and I were thrifting and we had spent like two hours in the store and then we waited in line and we checked out and then I turned around and they brought a new rack out and I looked at him and I was like, can I please go through it? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I'll wait on you. Even though, you know, we had just spent so much time and waited in line and checked out already. And at the end of this new rack, I immediately found this jacket and I was like, well, I'm glad I looked. So I checked out again, paid nine bucks for this. It was a super great sale. This is definitely a newer style. I had some trouble finding this style the time just because it was so newer um, and there wasn't a lot on the brand market. I later learned that this was called the Rain Rebel Jacket in a size 10 and I listed it for a little over $100. It ended up selling pretty quickly for $97. So that is the story of this jacket. And like I said, if you see something that feels really good, kind of athletic-y, but there's no brand label, look for the logo. All right, next up is a brand. I mentioned this in the last What Sold video. I like never had luck with this brand and honestly comps don't look great. But now I sold quite a few of their dresses and so I'm keeping my eye on this brand. It is universal standard. So far the dresses seem to be what's selling well for me. This is a size large in this brand. However, I believe they have vanity sizing. So I think size large equals something much larger in US sizing. Uh, but this was called the Geneva dress. And yeah, really great following on the dresses, not so much everything else. And this ended up selling for $40 on Posh. Here is another bolo, especially as we move towards like Halloween time. Um, I make sure to get it listed before that. So it has time to sell. Hot Topic stuff's doing really well. People like to buy Hot Topic not only in the like goth emo aesthetic, but also for Halloween. I know a lot of people like buying uh, stuff for costumes. This one is a steampunk, uh, I, I we called it a vest. I don't know what you would call this, a top, a vest, whatever, a waistcoat, um, but very steampunky, very interesting. I listed this, I uh, kind of had to make up a price for this, listed it for $55 on Poshmark, got an offer for $45, and I accepted. And kind of like wacky stuff from Hot Topic I always get. Next up is a brand I pick up on pretty much anything because it has a really great following. It is Reformation. 
I will say like some things, if it's just a plain black, black t-shirt, you're probably only going to get 20, 25 for it. But in general, it's still going to sell really quickly. This brand just has such a great following. So this is a women's uh, just pretty plain striped button up shirt. It sold for $42 for me on Poshmark and it sold relatively quickly. Like I said, pretty much get everything in this brand. What I've noticed about this brand, especially in their dresses, which is what I think they're best known for, their, their longer length dresses, they don't feel super high quality, just my opinion, uh, but people love them. So again, if you did know to look for them or what they felt like, it might be something if you touched it on the rack, you'd just pass over, uh, but definitely check for that brand label. Next up is a Levi's men's denim vest and very interesting looking denim vest too. It's got a couple of different buttons here and I think it might've been a jacket that was like cut off. This did have multiple spots on the front. I think I originally listed this for $55 and it ended up selling for $45. This was a size small. Had it been a larger size, I probably could have gotten much, much more for this. Um, but wanted to show you guys the sale because as we move into fall and winter, Levi's denim jackets and like all variations of Levi's denim jackets tend to sell pretty well. If they've got uh, fur lining, Sherpa lining, plaid lining, things like that, definitely keep your eye out for Levi's denim jackets. And lastly is an athletic wear brand that has been performing really well for me. It is Roan. Uh, comps are kind of all over the place with this brand. I think it really depends on what you have. Um, what I have learned is that figuring out the exact style name uh, will benefit you greatly in your pricing. Because if you just look at Roan shirt shorts, you'll see that most of them are just like 25 bucks. Uh, with a good sell through rate, but most of them are 25 bucks. But the ones that actually state the style name in them tend to sell for like 35 to 40. Uh, that's what I've known with this brand. So this, uh, I figured it was called the Mako 7 inch Mako shorts um, in a size extra large. So definitely helped to increase value. Um, these I picked up for five bucks and they ended up selling it for $34 on Poshmark. So Again, big difference in price if you know the style name or not. That's just my opinion, and that is what I have learned about this brand. All right, guys, so that's it for what sold last week. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. If you're not already and you would like to be, don't forget to subscribe down below, and if you hit that notification bell, you'll be notified every single time I post these videos, and I do try to do them every single week. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.